Hello, I'm Dr. Jeffrey Hubona. This man, Dr. Andrew F. Hayes, made a significant contribution to the statistics analysis community through his exposition of how to untangle the effects of combined mediating and moderating direct indirect total effects that you may have in either a regression model that you can represent with regression or that you may have in a a path model a latent variable path model for example uh, as implemented in in structural equation modeling sim or pls path modeling dr hayes I wrote a book about this, which is Introduction to Mediation, Moderation, and Conditional Process Analysis. Very useful piece. Uh, there's more information about his work, of course, at his website here, www.afhays.com. Well, to continue, he developed scripts that implement uh, the untangling of all of these effects with mediating and moderating conditional processes for both SAS, SAS, and for both SPSS. Well, my colleague and I have developed a similar set of scripts that run in the R software. And it's a GUI-based app. You really don't have to know anything about R other than how to boot up the application, which is what I would like to show you. So, here we are at R. This is actually R Studio. You can start up the application in either uh, using either R Studio or the R console. If you're using the R console, you would just execute these three commands at the R prompt. I'm just going to do it in R Studio. It's really the same thing. This is our application. This is our source file. Um, it um, it's what you load. You have to source this file or load this file into R's memory, and then you can start it up with this command here at the bottom. So let's do this. The first thing we will do is to set the directory. The first thing you need to do, actually, is take the source file and put it in a folder on your computer somewhere. Create a folder and just put the single file in there. Then issue these three commands. This first one changes the directory uh, to that folder. So let's do that. So we say run. It opens up a window, Windows based prompt here. We drill down to the correct folder where I have the application and we say OK. Then we need to source in the file itself. The second command will do that. So we execute that command. There's the file. Source it in. And then all we have to do is execute this last command, this third command, and it'll open up the application. It loads, it looks in your system, and it loads any other packages that you need, in both installs them and loads them. And here is the application. I make it larger. It is, uh, there are no menus. There's a menu bar and two buttons to push. One you can use to load data, and the other is the uh, mediating, moderating process application itself. So let's, let's load in some data. You can load in either a comma-separated value data file, or it will also accept SPSS data files .sav. It's all GUI-based. You don't have to deal with R or menus. It's really very simple to use. So let's get one of Dr. Hayes's data sets. Uh, let's see, we'll get the protest data set. Say OK. Now you're ready to go. You push this other button, and another GUI opens up where you fill in all of the 
uh, arguments or choices, specifications of your particular uh, in mediation, moderation, interaction. Let's do something simple. We'll just do a simple mediation. We'll we'll do this. We'll do this one. Model four. If you if we scroll down the page for a bit, though, you can see how these can get complex. This is multiple mediation, multiple parallel mediation here in B. This is multiple serial mediation, model six in C. And there are other examples on this white paper that I pulled, that I downloaded from Dr. Hayes's website. But we will do this one. So we go back to our process app and we have to tell it the, the dependent variable, which is liking the independent variable, which is protest, and the mediator is this uh, REST PAPPR. And uh, let's see, we are going, this is model four in his templates. He has 75 different templates of these intertwined mediating, moderating effects. We will do some other things. We're going to estimate the indirect effect sizes, and we're going to show the total effects, and we will run the Sobel test. And we'll test the differences in the indirect effects, too, using a bootstrap. We'll use a bias-corrected um, bootstrap method. We have the choice of bias-corrected, user percentile, or Monte Carlo. He talks about these three different approaches in his book. They largely return the same uh, uh, conf con uh, confidence intervals, but not, not exactly. We, we're not going to use these other more complex um, choices, but you have these available okay, all right, uh, to use for more complex things. And then all we have to do is say, okay. And the results come out on the GUI. Here it is. And uh, open in a window. And so you see all the results here. Um, note that in the white paper, where I just showed you the model here. He has the results also published for that example right here. So you can check. Uh, the, the, the results we get, of course, are the exact same. And uh, you'll need to read up on, on this. But if you're involved in quantitative analysis, particularly path modeling, you could do this with the, the scores for the latent variables um, in PLS, for sure, and uh, with the covariance side, you would have the deterministic uh, factor scores, uh, which are this, basically the same thing. I advise you to look at Dr. Hayes' site, and I thank you for watching my video.